hopefully in today's video we are going to be going over activity and that would be activity as it relates to radioactive decay well what is activity as it relates to radioactive decay well it is simply the rate of decay of a radioactive sample expressed in the number of decays of that radioactive sample per unit of time that unit of time being the second so we can simply write down that it's the number of decays that occur per second okay as you know, when you have a radioactive sample, it's going to be decaying. It's going to be sending out some energy or some mass like alpha, beta, and gamma particles. You can measure the number of times that occurs per second, and that gives you the activity. The symbol for activity is simply the capital A. Sometimes you'll see people use a capital R, but in this video and in my videos, we'll use a capital A, A for activity. The unit being the Becquerel, which is a capital B, abbreviated with a capital B and a lowercase q. Don't forget the Becquerel was named after Henri Becquerel. He, along with Marie and Pierre Curie, won the Nobel Prize in 1903 for the work that they did um, on radioactivity. Becquerel discovered the first radioactive element, and that would be uranium. Okay, I think he did that in 1896, and then they won the, Pope, uh, the Nobel Prize in physics um, in the year... I believe it was 1903. Okay, so what is one Becquerel? One Becquerel is simply equal to one decay per second, which you will often see. This is the abbreviation, one Becquerel, and what it really means is that we, this is one over S, the number of decays per second, which you'll sometimes see it written as S to the minus one, which is the same thing as one over S. We don't write one over S, we don't write S to the minus one, we just simply write the Becquerel. So we could say that the activity of a sample is equal to 1.75 becquerels. That means that on average from your sample, you're getting 1.75 decays every second. Okay, so that's the background information for activity. Now, what does activity depend on? You will often see people or you'll often hear people say, oh, a sample is highly radioactive. What does that mean? It means it has a high rate of activity. That's usually what they're talking about. It's highly active. Well, why would it be highly active? Well, there's two things that affect the activity of a radioactive sample. So the activity depends on either or both, I shouldn't say either, both the amount of the substance that you have and the half-life. Because if you have a greater mass of the substance, if you have more of the stuff, you have more of the radioactive sample, then you're going to have more nuclei. And if you have more nuclei, then you're going to have a higher activity. All right? So that means that more mass, more activity, the mass and the activity are directly proportional to each other. Well, the half-life, the half-life and the activity are inversely proportional because if you have a longer half-life, you have a sample that has a half-life of billions of years, then it's going to be having less decays. you be decaying less often and therefore you're going to have a lower activity. So that means that the half-life and the activity are indirectly proportional to each other. Okay, so mass and activity directly proportional. One goes up, the other goes up, one goes down, the other goes down. And for half-life, it's indirectly proportional because the half-life goes up, the activity goes down. As the half-life goes down, then the activity goes up. They go in the opposite direction, so to speak. Okay, now, when we want to calculate the activity, now, these are the equations we can use. There's kind of three basic equations that we can use to calculate the activity. The first one is basically the definition of activity. It just says that the activity is equal to the number of decays that occur per second. So if you register like 10 decays over a period of 2 seconds, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and you have an activity of 5, or that you would say the activity is 5 becquerels. Now, an equation that we'll use in the coming videos and one that you maybe you will use more often says that the activity at some time t is equal to this symbol, which is lambda. This is not lambda as in wavelength. This is lambda as in the decay constant, which we'll talk about in just a moment what that is and how we calculate that. So it's the activity at some time t is equal to lambda times the number of radioactive nuclei that you have at that same time t. Okay, now what is lambda? Lambda, we said, is the decay constant. This is how you calculate the decay constant. The decay constant is calculated as the natural log of 2 divided by 
the half-life of the sample. Okay, now you got to be a little bit careful what units you use for the half-life. Now the half-life is often given in years. Like for carbon-14, the half-life is 5,730 years. But when you're calculating for activity, which we'll do in the next video, you have to convert this half-life from years into seconds. Okay? So just keep that in mind, and you'll see that in the next video. Now, this equation can be combined with this equation into a single equation, because this is lambda, this is lambda, they're both the decay constant, so we can substitute this term in here, and then you'll get that the activity at some time t is equal to the natural log of 2 times nt, the number of radioactive nuclei, at that same time t, divided by the half-life. Now, the natural log of 2 is equal to 0 0.693. So sometimes you'll see this equation written like this without the natural log of 2 and just 0 0.693 times nt divided by the half-life. This equation and this equation are the same equation. This equation is a combination of these two equations. So I would say this is the first equation. This is kind of the second equation. Of course, you need this one also. Then the third equation is this one, and this one says that the activity at some time t is equal to the activity at some time t0 at the original activity when the sample was first, you know, collected or the sample was first produced times e, which is Euler's number, raised the power of minus negative the uh, decay constant times the time t. This time t is the time that elapsed between these two different activity measurements. Okay, this is from the original sample at time equals zero. This is from the same sample, but at some time t later. Okay, so we can use this equation to calculate the original activity. For example, when you're doing radioactive dating, radiocarbon dating for carbon-14. This is the activity at some time t later. And this is that same time t, which therefore you can use to calculate how old the sample was. Okay? And like I said, we'll do those in the coming videos. Link to those in the upper right-hand corner. All right. Now, the last thing I just want to go over in this video is how we can use activity to produce a graph and to determine the half-life. Okay? So here we have the data that we collected. When we first collected the first sample, and we measured the, ha the counts, the activity. This is the counts, the activity. The activity was 62. So we're going to put a dot at, put a dot, put a data point at 62 counts. And that's at time equals zero. That's how we counted the activity. 20 days later, we measured the activity. And the activity is 38, so we put a data point at 38. Then another 40 days or 60 days from the original, we have the activity as 20. So we put a data point at 60 and 20. Then 90 and 12 and 120, and the activity at 120 is 8. The activity decreases over time because the sample is decaying. And as the time it goes on, then there's less radioactive nuclei because they've decayed, and therefore the activity decreases. And you can see we get this nice exponential curve, which we can draw a line, and we can bind those points to each other. Okay, connecting all those points. It's not a straight line. It's a de exponentially decaying curve. Now, you'll notice that the counts were originally, when we took our first measurement, was 62, that this activity was 62. Well, the counts, the activity is directly related to the number of nuclei that we have. So when one half-life has occurred, that means we'll have half as many nuclei, and that means that the activity will also be half of the original. So the original activity was 62. So we're going to go down here to 31, which would be the activity after one half-life, half of the sample that's gone, so we're going to have half as many decays. Now, we don't have a data point here, but we can draw a line across to our curve, and we can interpolate that from that point, which is 31, uh, the activity is 31, that that would be occur after about 
this is 10, and that's 20, and that's 30, about 32 or 33 days. This is just an estimation. We're not actually calculating. So that tells us that for this sample, based on this data, that the half-life of that sample is just about 32 days. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So there you go. That's a basic introduction to activity, the units, how we calculate it, the equations, and then how we can graph the activity to get the half-life. Like I said, in the coming videos, we'll do some very interesting problems, including one coming up for radiocarbon dating using carbon-14. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Support my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos by subscribing to my channel. Click on that right button on the right-hand side there in the bottom right-hand corner. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.